Good morning, everyone. Good morning. And welcome to you guests who that are here with us um, in the sanctuary and on the Ustream. We welcome you to Praise Center Church of God in Christ this morning. Amen. And we hope that you feel like you're right at home. This is the place that you should be at on this morning. We um, don't take it lightly that you stop by to visit us and to join us this morning. But we hope something will be said and done this morning that would encourage your hearts to, you know, grow, get closer to God. Yes. Encourage your hearts to come back yet again to fellowship and worship with us. And may this week be an awesome week for you. Be the best week ever, your best week ever, because you stopped by Praise Center on this morning. Amen. Yes. God yes. bless you. Amen. Right before we go into the selection, um, before our pastor comes up. I want to encourage all the women um, of Praise Center um, to get ready for the retreat. Now is the time you need to start preparing your funds and making your payments for the retreat. It's going to be here in a couple of in a few months, so we want to make sure um, that you start making payments on that because we want everyone to go. Amen. Everyone. I wish I could pay for everyone, but I can't. Amen. So I want everyone to start getting your funds together now so that we can go and have an awesome time in the Lord. Amen. Awesome time fellowshipping with one another. Awesome time shopping. Awesome time just doing everything yeah, that women yeah. like to do. It is a time where we can go and refresh um, and be with each other and draw closer to God. Just get closer to Him um, in that setting. So make sure you are getting yourselves ready. Pastor cannot come. No men allowed. But we want all the women, all the females of Praise Center to come. And, and those of you that have um, a dear friend that would like to come, we have opened it up yeah, for yeah. those that would like to come. Because yeah. we do have some already that have um, had inquiries and, and interest in um, and, and they don't even live in the state. <laughs> so, they, so ladies, we want to, we, we, we want to run out of space. Yeah, I do. Yeah. We want to run out of space yeah, for this retreat. Yeah, yeah. So make sure you get the information and get the payment plan and everything. It doesn't cost that much, but, you know, we want everybody to be prepared because we want to make sure you have some shopping money yes, for yeah. that weekend. Amen. Amen. Our pastor is getting ready to come yeah, with the word of God. Yes, we are in prayer with our pastor, for our pastor, for his strength, for his guidance, that God gives him everything that he needs in order to lead us, the people of God. Awesome man of God, and we just want to encourage his heart to keep on going strong, to keep on doing the will of the Lord, and to seek God in everything as we follow him. After we sing this song, I ask that everyone that is in the sanctuary would please stand to your feet to give reverence to our pastor, the elder Eugene McCallan.
offer unto you our praise on this morning. And our Father in heaven, we thank you for this day. We thank you for what our eyes have seen thus far and what our ears have heard. And our Father, we pray that you continue to bless us and anoint us, O oh God, even now, as we continue in the furtherance of this service, O oh God. May the words of my mouth. And the meditations of my heart, let them be acceptable in thy sight. For Lord, you are my strength and you are my redeemer. And I bless your name now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. We bless his name and we glorify him this day. Hallelujah. While you are standing, I want you to quickly turn with me to Genesis chapter 50. And we shall begin reading today or this morning at verse 15. There is a sweet, sweet presence uh, in this place today. Hallelujah. Yeah. And I know my beautiful wife is here, but that spirit, that presence I feel right now that's making uh, joy bells ring down in my soul is the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. He's in this house today. He's in this place. He's dwelling with us even now and showering down his blessings and showering down his anointing, God. Thank you, God, today. Hallelujah. We bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name, Lord. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 50. Hallelujah. And I'm, I'm just so excited. I feel renewed. I feel revived. I feel encouraged. And I thank God for another day that he's allowed me to see and another day that he has made. I shall be reading Genesis chapter 50. Uh, we're going to be reading verse 15 through 20. And then also for your note taking, I have some additional scriptures. But this morning's scripture comes from Genesis chapter 50, verse 15, and it begins reading as such. And when Joseph's brethren saw that their father was dead, they said, Joseph will peradventure hate us and will certainly requite us all the evil which we did unto him. And they sent a messenger unto Joseph, saying, Thy father did command before he died, saying, so shall ye say unto Joseph, Forgive, I pray thee now, the trespass of thy brethren and their sin. For they did unto thee evil, and now we pray thee, forgive the trespasses of, or excuse me, the trespass of the servants of God of thy father. And Joseph wept when they spake unto him. And his brethren also went and fell down before his face. And they said, Behold, we be thy servants. And Joseph said unto them, For fear not, for I am in the for am I in the place of God? But as for you, you thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good, to bring to pass as it is in this day, to save much people alive. And then for your hearing, as you still remain standing, Romans 8 and 28, and it reads, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, and to, to them, excuse me, to them who are called according to his purpose. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord today. I give honor to God, who is definitely the head of my life, my redeemer, my strong tower, my keeper, to his son, Jesus Christ. And to my comforter, the sweet Holy Spirit. I thank God for my beautiful wife on this day who stands by my side and continues to pray for me, to encourage me, to help me to continue to run on to see what the end is going to be. Today, for a few moments, I won't be before you long because we have a long day ahead of us this day. And, uh, and I'll, after the end of the message, I'll um, talk a little bit further about our upcoming Holy Convocation and some other events that we have upcoming um, that, at Pray Center that we want to highlight. But I want to get directly and quickly into the Word of God. So for those that like to take notes, uh, this morning I want to use for a topic the transition from trial to triumph. The transition from trial to triumph, or you can even replace trial with tribulation. The transition from tribulation to triumph. Psalms 34 and 19 states, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered him out of them all. This psalm penned by uh, King David uh, when he was forced to flee from his own country into the land of the Philistines because his king, his, his leader, King Saul, was trying to kill him. 
This psalm is a scripture that epitomizes the life and legacy of the focus of our scripture today, and that is Joseph. Now, Joseph, for those that don't know, Joseph was the 11th of 12 sons born to Jacob, or as he was known in his latter days, Israel. Now, Jacob uh, 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 was a great man of God. He was one of the patriarchs of the Bible. His father was Isaac, and Isaac's father was Abraham, and these are, are the ones that God made the covenant with uh, for the children of Israel, and that we still have that covenant today. And so Joseph, uh, uh, he was the 11th of 12 brethren. And Joseph's brethren uh, were as follows. His oldest brother was Reuben, and his, here's the order. Reuben was born, and, and Simeon, and Levi, and Judah. And all of these brothers were uh, born to uh, Leah, who was um, Jacob's first wife. Um, and then came Dan and Naphtali, um, who were born to Bila, uh, which was Rachel's handmaid. And then the next set of boys were Gad and Asher, who were born to Zilpah, who uh, was Leah's handmaid. And then the, uh, the latter part of the brethren was Issachar and Zebulun, who were again born to Leah. And then the last uh, set of brothers were uh, Joseph and his baby brother Benjamin, who was born to Rachel, who was the woman that Jacob loved uh, the most and who he planned to initially Mary. Now, I've given you some history already, and there are so many dynamics in and messages that can be taken from the craziness of uh, Jacob and his family and all of these children, uh, children, uh, children that were born to him. Um, but to stay on point this morning, uh, we'll be focusing on the life of Joseph and the interactions between him and his older brothers. Again, we'll be talking about the transition, if you walk with me, the transition from trial uh, to triumph. And for those that don't know the story, Joseph was the firstborn son to Jacob's favorite wife, Rachel. And because of the love that um, Jacob had uh, 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 exhibited towards um, his favorite son, Joseph, his brethren uh, despised him. Now, Joseph uh, uh, was his father's favorite, and, and we as parents have to be careful and beware of picking favorites amongst our children. Yes, one might act the best out of them all, and yes, one might remind you of you and, and deserve some extra uh, leniency and extra mercy. Yes, uh, one might uh, uh, get on your last nerves and, and you wish that they had never come out. Uh, but uh, any time a parent picks a favorite between um, their children, they are creating wounds uh, um, that would take a lifetime uh, to heal. According to Psychology Today, I did a little, re little research and uh, Psychology Today, it, it mentions that disfavored uh, children experience uh, worse outcomes than those um, who are the favorites. Um, one of the uh, outcomes of um, children who are disfavored is that they have a high rate of uh, depression. Another factor is that they, they have greater aggressiveness when it comes to their lifestyles and their actions. Um, then also, another focus is that they have lower self-esteem. And then lastly, they mention uh, that these uh, children who are disfavored have poorer academic performance when it comes to school. Now, these repercussions are far more extreme than the benefits received by the favorite child or children. For, and for the favorite child or children. Their siblings often come to resent them, poisoning any type of relationship that they can have. And sadly, many of these consequences persist long after the children have grown up because for some reason, the parents still play favorites um, in between their adult children, which uh, allows the, the toxic family dynamics to be sustained throughout the adulthood of the child. Now, the results of this toxicity can be found in Genesis chapter 49. If you can turn with me to Genesis chapter 49, it outlines how the toxicity, um, how toxic the family uh, environment was in the house of Jacob. Now, in verse 4, it identifies uh, Jacob. He was on his deathbed in chapter 49. And uh, uh, as he was on his deathbed, he, he gathered his sons. He gathered all his children to come where he was at so that he can speak life. Now, any time in those days that men, the fathers, the patriarchs of the family passed away, they took time to pass on their favor and their anointings and their blessings on to their children. And so in verse 4, it, he talks about his blessings um, that he restored upon Reuben. 
excuse me, in, in verse 3, it talks about um, what he talked about uh, for Reuben. But in verse 4, it, it identifies that Reuben suffered from low self-esteem and common sense. It says that uh, Reuben was unstable as water, though uh, thou shalt not excel, because thou wentest up to thy father's bed, then the foulest thou it. He went up to my cap. So because of uh, uh, the favoritism, the family dynamics, Reuben suffered from low self-esteem, and he had poor academic performance as this identified in this scripture um, just because he slept with his father's handmaid. Now in verse 5 it, it begins to talk about Simeon and Levi, um, Joseph's brother and as well his older brother. And then in verse 5 it, it mentions that uh, uh, Simeon and Levi, instruments of cruelty are in their inhabitations or in their inhabitations. Inha oh my soul come not thou into their secret, unto their assembly, mine honor be thou united for in their anger they slew a man and then their self will they dig down a wall so it identifies that Reuben I mean Simeon and Levi they had issues with being aggressive and with being anger and in their anger they slew a man that defiled their sister uh, Joseph I mean Dinah and it goes on to continue uh, to talk about um, some other sons. And I want to highlight Judah. It says that Judah was honorable. But Judah also had some integrity issues. Judah, he was a person that was not true to his word for uh, his daughter-in-law, Tamar. He promised her that when he had a son after uh, the other boys had died, after his other boys had uh, uh, passed away because they were disobedient to what God had instructed them to do. He promised his younger son uh, to uh, his daughter-in-law, Tamar. But he was not true to his word. He had some character of uh, flaws in his uh, in his DNA that caused him to uh, have some issues. And then in verse 16 in, in Genesis chapter 49 it talks about Dan and that Dan was going to have some issues in his future. Dan suffered from low self-esteem and depression. And it says and here it identifies that Dan would be like a serpent in verse 16 and that he would slither along a path and not only would he slither along a path but he would nip at the heels or bite the heels of horses causing the rider to fall so he was somebody who would, would stab somebody in the back that he would come behind he wasn't somebody who was strong that would come um, before them and challenge them but he would be someone who would slide from behind and try to slip at the people's feet and then it also identifies Joseph it talks about Joseph that Joseph would be hated and in the house of Jacob two things uh, uh, brought pollution to the family dynamics first I mean chapter 49 shows it but two things highlighted um, the family dynamics and uh, 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 the pollution of the family dynamics. One was the battle between Leah and Rachel for the love of Jacob. It's amazing that uh, Jacob had four wives. And the only reason they had four wives is because Rachel could not bear any children. And so since she could not bear any children, she felt like she was inadequate in the eyesight of her husband. And Leah, the one that was supposed to be ugly, the one um, that was not uh, the one that uh, uh, Jacob really wanted to marry in the first place, she was having children left and right. And so they were battling back and forth for the love and affection of their husband, Jacob. And then the second family dynamic that, that caused uh, pollution in the house of Jacob was Jacob's overt favoritism towards his son Joseph. Now it's important to note that we as parents uh, we were blessed with our children. God didn't just allow us to have our children by happenstance. And, and there are many people out there that would die today just to have children. And for those that are yearning uh, to, to birth children and they're so desperate that even if they can't birth children, they're willing to go out and adopt children so that they can uh, have that satisfaction of grooming and raising children. And so since God blessed us with with these children, it is our responsibility to groom these children and groom them in the fear and the admonition of the Lord and to train them up in the way that they should go. Because God expects us to bless our children just like he blesses us. And when we fail to do our jobs as, as parents, our children and their future, I mean their uh, future, suffer the consequences. Let me slow down here. I'm excited in the presence of the Lord today. And so if you can continue to walk with me. Let's turn our Bibles into uh, Genesis chapter 37 and I want to take you into the transition from trial to triumph in the life of J uh, Joseph uh, this morning. Uh, Genesis chapter 37 and we're going to begin reading at verse uh, 2. Genesis chapter 37 and in verse 2 it says these are the generations of Jacob. 
Joseph, being 17 years old at this time, was feeding the flock with his brethren, and the lad was with the sons of Billah. Remember, the sons of uh, the sons of Billah are um, I identified them early. The sons of Billah are. Uh, uh, Dan and Naphtali. Then also says that he was with the sons of Zilpah, and the sons of Zilpah are go back in here and help me, Lord. Gad and Asher. And so he was with his his brothers, his uh, the handmaid sons. And so uh, Joseph brought back. It says in chapter two, uh, verse two, and Joseph brought unto his father their evil report. And in verse three, now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children. There's no misunderstanding of what the scripture is saying right there. It says he loved. Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age and he made him a coat of many colors. And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. This is what Jacob's favoritism caused uh, uh, in uh, his family. Jacob loved his son Joseph so much and he loved him more than all of his other brethren. And not only did Jacob love him much more than any of his other brethren, he also gave him a special gift that made him stand out more than any of the other brothers. He gave him a coat of many colors. And as you continue to read in chapter 37, it talks about how he flaunted this coat. This coat, Joseph was the one that he was somebody that was a tattleteller. Uh, his confidence and knowing that he was his father's favorite. He, he became the, the household tattleteller. And I know that if anybody else is not like me, uh, uh, I can't stand, many people can't stand tattletellers. They, they can't stand people who just go in and tattletale uh, for no reason at all. And since Joseph was daddy's boy, he thought that he was better than everyone else. He was daddy's inside man. Anything that daddy needed to know, he can count on getting the information from Joseph. And I put here again, I don't know if anyone else is just like me, but many people can't stand uh, tattletellers. Uh, there's a ditch, but I need you all, and young people that's in here understand there's a difference between being a tattletale and being someone who tells the truth. And you must understand when there's a point in time where you must tell the truth and someone needs to know whether to get your friends and your family in trouble, uh, 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 it's going to save their life. And so not only did their father's favoritism make Joseph a tattleteller, it also made his brothers hate him to death. Joseph was a plague. They, didn't, they couldn't stand to be around. Joseph and they couldn't even muster up anything good to say to him. And I know mama said that if you can't say anything good at all, don't say anything at all. But it seems like they took that saying, they took that note uh, to the real extreme. Joseph couldn't do anything right in their eyes. They couldn't stand to be around him. They couldn't stand him to be in their presence. They couldn't even stand to look upon him and they didn't want to have anything to do or hear anything that he had to say. And I've been saying, I've been preaching uh, throughout the year uh, about the law of seed time and harvest. And it's amazing how uh, the sins of Jacob, their father, has came to roost in the home of his children and in the lives of his children. What's amazing to know uh, that sometimes we think and we forget um, that there is a law and that law is a true law. That law is a law that it says that if you sow love, then you can't help but reap love. If, if, if you sow hate, you can't help but reap hate. And, and many times we think of that law of seed time and harvest as a law that's just based on our financial situation. But that law it's something that we can use over every area of our life. If we sow goodness in our relationship, then we can't help but get goodness back. And if we sow a goodness on our job, we can't help but sow great things on our job or reap great things on our job. In our homes and in our churches and in our ministries, if we take time to invest good things, if we sow bountifully, then we also reap bountifully, as the scripture says. But to make matters worse, Joseph was a dreamer. Joseph was a dreamer. And as I said earlier today, that there are many messages in this passage of scriptures, but just please take note of this one focus. Joseph was a dreamer. And I want all the dreamers in the house of the Lord today and all those that are tuning in online today, I want you to take note of this important fact. That everybody can't handle what God has for you. Everybody can't handle, let me say it again, everybody can't handle what God has for you. Some things you need to keep 
to yourself and stop sharing your dreams with haters because haters they don't want to believe in your dreams they don't want you to uh, your dreams to come true in your life and they don't want you to uh, be about your dreams so stop sharing your dreams with haters and know that you're not alone God has your back and as long as you continue to trust and lean into uh, uh, to you, lean on him he'll continue to keep you and he'll bring all the dreams that he has shared with you to pass in the name of Jesus he'll bring them to pass during your lifetimes but it's no often to know that our actions have consequences and because of these actions Joseph's brothers hate for him caused them to have many uh, repercussions one of those repercussions was that they decided that they uh, that they had a discussion about killing him and that can be found in uh, Genesis chapter 37 and verse 20 also another repercussion of, uh, of their actions or the actions or the output from uh, the sin that was in the life of their family um, they uh, had a desire to um, they decided to throw him into a pit and that can be found in verse 24 then they decided that they were going to uh, sell him into slavery this was the third uh, consequences of the actions that came from uh, uh, Joseph or uh, Jacob's favoritism in the uh, pollution toxic pollution that was in their family they decided to sell their own flesh and blood into slavery and that can be found in verse 28 of Genesis chapter 37 and then it also caused Reuben or caused a brother and the other brother to lie to Reuben uh, who just wasn't uh, along with the uh, plans that they had uh, for their brethren and, and that can be found in verse 29 and then they went on to devise an extreme lie to cover up their actions and I need to stop here because uh, we mentioned before that when we lie and if we continue in our lives our lies will cause us to continue to lie upon a lie and at some point we'll forget our lies and then our lies come up to bite us back in the butt and so they devised an extreme lie they decided they were going to take Joseph's jacket his coat of many colors and what they did is they slayed a lamb they, they didn't have no reason for slaying a lamb when they got back to their father they couldn't explain why the lamb was slain uh, but they slew, they slew a lamb and sprinkled blood all up over the jacket so that it can make it seem like uh, he had been devoured uh, by a, 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 an animal a killer animal a, a, a lion or whatever it could have been I know I made that up but it, it could have been killed by a, a wild animal that's what I needed to say and so that was found in verse 31 their extreme plan uh, to deceive their father and then last but not least uh, their lie and their lifestyle and their discontent and the consequences that came from the actions of the family it caused heartache for the entire family but when they returned back to Jacob and told them uh, what had come or what had befallen uh, their brother Joseph um, Joseph could not be consoled it, it was found in uh, uh, Genesis chapter 37 and verse 35 they could not console him at all and not only did his daughters or his sons could not console him but no one could console him so daddy was not happy everybody and when daddy's not happy it seems like the whole family is affected when daddy's not happy but it's amazing to know that Joseph suffered uh, through many afflictions. Getting back to my initial scripture that I uh, talked about in uh, Psalm 34, Joseph suffered through many afflictions. And a few were brought on by his actions, while the rest were brought on by the actions of others. But Joseph, just as David declared years um, after uh, the days of Joseph, uh, God delivered Joseph out of every single affliction and every single issue that came his way. Yes, you may have some mis made some mistakes in your life. Yes, you may have uh, been lied on, and yes. You have been, may have been misused and abused, but Paul declared in Romans 8 and 28, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them that are called according to his purpose. Paul gives us the character traits that will help us to overcome every obstacle that comes our way and to make a successful transition from trial to triumph. Now, Paul declared that uh, it, 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 it's noted here that Paul gives us these traits. It doesn't matter where we came from, or it doesn't matter how our last name is spelled, or it doesn't matter where God brought us from before he changed our lives. But Paul boldly declared in uh, uh, Romans 8 and 28, and we know. And so it, it, there was no doubt in Paul's mind that he knew just what God was able to do. There was no doubt in his mind that his statement was a guarantee. Now, when you walk with the Father both day and night, you can be assured that he's ordering your footsteps. And if you have that surety that he's ordering your footsteps, then no devil in hell and no devil on his world can hell can separate you from the love of God. And Paul says, and we know. And we know means that nobody can tell me 
otherwise. It doesn't matter what you have to say or what you think. And we know, I don't care what you think or what you say, I know that my God is able to do it exceedingly, abundantly above all that I can ask or think. He gave us character traits, Paul did. He told us, and we know. So the first trait is that we have to know without a shadow of a doubt that God is able to do just what he said he's going to do. And then the next character trait is we must have is that we must love God. It goes all together and we know. But if we love God, then we know that it's a guarantee to come to a fact. And then the third trait that he had, listen, in Romans 8, 28, it says, though to those that are called according to his purpose. And so if you know and if you love God and if you are the called according to his purpose, then there's nothing that should be able to separate you from the love of God. You have to know that all things will work together for the good. And so never once did we ever read in the scripture that Joseph complained about his situation. Not only did Joseph know that he loved God, but he had no doubt that he was called according to God's purpose. So whatsoever state that Joseph found himself to be in, he found himself to be content. He said, sell me into slavery like his brothers did, but I won't complain. Sell me to Potiphar's house, but I'm going to be content. Potiphar's wife may try to assault me, but I won't complain. Throw me in jail unjustly, but I'm going to be content. Forget about me. Lie upon me. Forget the promises that you made, but I won't complain today. Leave me behind and let me leave the state in prison while you excel, but I'm going to be content today. Scandalize my name, but I won't complain. Talk about me today, but I'm going to be content because if God be for me, who can be against me? The Bible tells us that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. It just will not work today. If I hold my peace, then let the Lord fight my battle. The songwriter said today, victory, victory shall be mine. And so though we may be destined to reap what we sow, I'm so glad to know that God's plans outweigh our actions and the actions of others. If my present was dictated by the actions of my parents, then I wouldn't be standing here today. I was raised in a single parent home. My father decided to leave us at an early age. But the thanks be to God, I had a praying mother. And so my mother decided that she was going to pray for us. And the effectual and fervent prayer of the righteous man and woman, it availed much. And I thank God today that though I didn't necessarily have a relationship with my father as a child, but I thanks be to God today, I do have a relationship with him today. Because God works everything out for our good. And so God, we thank him today. We thank him today for all that he has done. And so in our theme scripture today, in Genesis chapter 50 verse, uh, chapter 50 verse 20, uh, uh, Joseph told his brothers, they began to lie again and they said that our father, your father, made us promise to ask you to forgive us today. But Joseph told them what you meant for evil. God meant it for good. And so as I began to think Joseph's mindset. He had to go through trials and tribulations so that many lives can be saved. And so that reminds me today that our lifestyle is not just for us. The way that God takes us is not just for us. Every single trial that comes our way is not just for us. But every step that we make today, every move that we make today is for God's glory and it's for the glory of the people of God today. Job had those same type of situations. But Job was troubled on every hand. Job was suffering uh, consequences that he didn't do anything at all. Job was a righteous man and he did everything according to God's will. But even though he did everything according to God's will, he still suffered from some affliction. The people came to him and told him that his sons died. Then people came and told him that his cattle was stolen away. Then people came and told him that all his children were dead. But Job didn't do anything else, but he decided to continue to bless the name of our God. Everything he did, he made sure that he brought glory to God. And so in Job 14 and 14, it says, all the days of my life until my appointed time, I'll wait on the Lord. Job decided that he was going to wait on the Lord and not hold on to anything else. If we can just hold on to God, hold on to his unchanging head, God will bring us through every situation. He'll bring us through every single trial. He'll bring us 
the transition for us to be successful in our trials, transition from trial to triumph, uh, we must uh, uh, love God. We must love God unconditionally. We must love God just because he is who he said that he is. Just because he is God alone, he's worthy to be loved, he's worthy to be praised, and he's worthy to be adored. And then the third characteristic, the third trait that Paul gives us in the transition from trial to triumph is that we have to be the called according to his excellent purpose. Do you know that you know that you know today? Do you love God today? Are you the called according to his excellent purpose? Well, if you have those three character traits that you hold on to, that you love God, no matter what comes what may, no matter what comes your way, if you love God, then I guarantee you that your transition from triumph, your trial to triumph will be an easy road. And I'm not saying that this, the, the situation in life will be easy, but if you can just hold on to God, God will bring you through, and he'll bring you through better than you was when you started the situation. Anytime trials come our way, they come to take us higher. And so anytime the, uh, something comes in our lives, it's so God can transition us to a greater place that he has meant for us. Is there anybody in the household today that's suffering through different trials and tribulations in your life? If you are, I got a word for you today. This word was for you today to let you know that God has made a way for you to escape already. He's already fought the battle. He's already won the fight. We are already victorious. That's all we have to do is hold on to God's unchanging hand. Everyone rest on their feet in the house of the Lord today. The transition from trial to triumph. Every head is bowed and every eye is closed. Are you going through experiences that Joseph went through? I know I didn't get deep into his story. I, as I said, there's so many different things that we could have led, but this is what God led me to talk about today sold into slavery, despised and hated by his brethren, uh, uh, sold into slavery into Potiphar's house. But every stop that David, I mean that Joseph made, he excelled in every area that he was put in. Every difficult situation, every circumstance that came his way, he excelled to the top. Cream rises to the top. No matter what's going on, no matter what's in the coffee, no matter what's in the drink, the cream of the crop always rises to the top. And Joseph was the creme de la creme out of all his brethren. He was the one that God had anointed for a time such as this. Everything that Joseph went through is for uh, the betterment of his people as a whole. His trials, his tribulations, his, his difficulties in life was all meant to take him higher in God and to take him higher in his physical life so that one day he could become the right hand man to Pharaoh and save his brothers, those that hated him and those that despised him, to save them out of the situation, the desperation that was going to be brought into their lives. God knows the thoughts that he thinks towards us. He knows what we need to do and where we need to go. Everything that comes in our life is for a reason so that God can take us higher and put us in a place where we can be a blessing to not only to ourselves but to our family. Not only to our families but to the world at large. So with every head bowed with every eye closed again, what are you going through today? This scripture, this word today was here to encourage you to hold on and see what the end is going to be. This scripture is here to encourage you to let you know that you're not in this alone. Others have been through trials and others have been through tribulations in your life, but God delivers them out of them all. That's what the word of God says. You have to know that you know that you know that God is able to bring you out. And all you have to do is continue to love him. That's all you have to do is remain to be the called according to his purpose. That God will continue to do exceeding abundantly above all that He can you can ever ask or think. But it's a According to what works in you today. What are you going through today? That God is preparing you for greatness today. What are you going through today that God has something great in store for you on this day? God is able to do it. And he not only is able to do it, he's able to do it greatly and abundantly above all that you can ever ask or think. 
Father in heaven, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your many blessings. We thank you for this word that you've put into my heart to share with these here, your people. I don't know the afflictions and the trials and the tribulations that you have in store for these, your people. But God, I declare life in them today. I declare strength in them today. I encourage them, oh God, them today to hold on to your unchanging hand. I've encouraged them, oh God, to hold on and see what the end is going to be because you have something greater in store for them today. Eyes have not seen. Excuse me, let me not say it wrong. Eye has not seen. Ear has not heard. Neither has it appeared unto men. What good things you have in store for those that love you, oh God. Those that follow you. Those that believe on you, oh God. Those that trust in you, oh God, today. So God, we pray that this word, oh God, will be hidden in their hearts that they might not sin against thee. And that they may not turn back from this gospel plow. Plow, you have something great in store for this church, for this ministry, for these people, for those that have tuned into this message. And let your word, oh God, uh, be manifested in their lives and come forth and, and allow them to reap a bountiful blessing in the mighty name of Jesus. Transition us, God. Take us higher, oh God. Make our feet like make our feet like hinds feet in the name of Jesus and take us higher. Whatever come, whatever may, oh God. Take us higher, oh God, that we might go higher in you in the mighty name of Jesus. We want to go higher. We want to go higher in you, oh God. We know that you will never leave us and that you will never forsake us, God. That you'll be with us until the end of the world, God. Take us higher, oh God. We understand that trials and tribulations may come our way, oh God. But your word tells us, oh God, that you will deliver us out of them all, God. You'll give us a victory out of them all, God. You'll make us a head and not the tail, oh God. You'll make us more than overcomers, oh God. But it's all about you, oh God. So we trust you, oh God, today. We believe that you know that you're doing what you're doing, God. We know that you know the thoughts that you think towards us, God. Thoughts of victory, oh God, today. Thoughts of peace, oh God, and not of evil to give us an expected end. So hide your word, oh God, and let your word, God, bless us and keep us all week long. And we'll continue to give your name the glory and honor and the praise. We thank you, God, today. Joy bells ringing down up in my soul because, God, you gave me what we needed today to hold on. This is where my joy is coming from, God, because I know what I see, oh God, is not the end result, God. Again, I say, I have not seen, ear has not heard, neither has it appeared unto me what good things God has in store for us. God has some great things in store for us, and so I speak those things that are not as though they were. I speak life into us now. I speak people into this sanctuary even now. I speak growth into this ministry even now, oh God. This is just for a, a period of time, oh God. But we know that you're going to open up the windows of heaven and pour out blessings that we won't have enough room to receive it in the mighty name of Jesus. Bless the hearer, oh God. Help us to be doers of the word and not just hearers only, oh God. And we'll be careful to bless your name and to give you all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. For it's in Jesus' name we pray this day. Amen, amen. Come on, put your hands together and let's magnify the God of our salvation on this day. Hallelujah. Thank you for the victory, God, today. Thank you, O oh God, for making me more than all the power of God today. Thank you for making me the head and not the tail, God. Thank you, God, today. And we bless your mighty and your holy name. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord on this day as you begin to get your offerings together on, on this day. For those that are tuning online before we dismiss you, we would like to encourage you. We pray that you enjoyed this message today and enjoyed this service. I, I thoroughly enjoyed the praises of our God today and I thoroughly enjoyed the word of God today because it was for me. It reminded me to hold on to God no matter what comes or what may. And so if you've been encouraged by the word of God today, I want to encourage you to sow into this ministry. This ministry, we're a young ministry and we need all of the blessings we can get. We not only need your prayers, but we need financial support as well to continue with this streaming ministry we need some support uh god is sending in some blessings for us uh, but we need financial support as well so i want to encourage you today that if you enjoyed this message you enjoyed this service today i would encourage you to click on one of those buttons the type button at the bottom or click on the partner with praise center button at the bottom and so into this great ministry that god has placed here in the city city of dumfries so partner with us tight into this ministry and watch God 
open up the windows of heaven and pour out blessings that you won't have enough room to receive it. I declare it right now in Jesus' precious name. Uh, we declare that it's done. Amen and amen. But before you cut the cast, I also want to remind you of the fact that on September 16th through the 18th, we'll be hosting a citywide youth revival. Spread the news, spread the news. Uh, President Quentin Battle, or Pastor Quentin Battle out of Portsmouth, Virginia, will be our special revivalist September 16th through the 18th um, for a citywide youth revival. We want to spread the word and spread the news. We'll have something on our website um, upcoming in this week, and we want you all to spread the news about this great event that God is going to bring to the city of Dumfries and to the great northern district and to this uh, area of northern Virginia. September 16th through the 18th market calendars uh, for a great move of God here at Praise Center as we host a citywide youth revival. May God bless you and may heaven shine upon you. And for those in the house, hold on to the bed. For those in the house of the Lord today, you may be able to come where you are and bring in your blessings into the house of the Lord this day.